If you guys want to know how you can make this speaker box from start to finish and put it inside of your Audi A5, A4, A6, watch this video from beginning to end and I'll show you exactly how. All right guys, so the first set of tools that you're gonna need in order to start this actual retrofit for this custom box is you're gonna need a box cutter. You're gonna need an 11 inch speaker ring. Now, for those of you that wanna do um, a 10 inch speaker in the rear, then you would need a nine inch speaker ring. So the rule of thumb is have your ring to be one inch smaller than the diameter of your actual speaker. I'm gonna sell these kits on eBay and I'm gonna leave a link in the description if you guys are interested, but it, it can go for um, 10 inch woofers as well as 12 if you're interested in an eight, uh, then I can potentially make you an eight. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need these little wood rods. And I'm gonna leave a link in the description for all of these items, but these rods are really, really cheap. Probably about two, three bucks for a pack of 12. Um, and you're gonna need a glue gun. So um, the glue gun purpose is gonna be to create, I guess you can say, the diameter of the box. And you're gonna see as you see the video, but these are gonna be the first things that you're gonna need just for the construction of the box. Along with the adhesive that I'm gonna to use to spray on the speaker box. And as you can see, this is gonna be the material um, that I got from Amazon, really cheap material, about $9.99 for more than you need. Um, I'm gonna use this to cover it so it can match the inside of my car. All right, guys, so the first thing that you want to do is you want to go over here to this panel right over here and you want to remove this panel from your car because this panel is the panel that you're going to be using to actually create the box. So I'm going to take this panel out of my car. It pops right out like so. So I'm going to pull this out and this is going to be how I'm gonna start the process. Just as a side note, guys, unfortunately, yes, you do have to cut it from right here. So it will need to be cut in order to remove it. It's attached to the actual liner of the car, but that's fine because we're gonna set it up to where it can go right back in. So guys, I use this box cutter and I just started from this end. This cuts really easily, so you don't have to worry about it being too tough. Any box cutter will work. You wanna use one that's firm, just so you won't have a blade that can blend and potentially harm you. Also make sure you're wearing eye goggles when you're doing this. Um, always when you're working with a blade because I've seen blades pop and just get some nice scratches. So yeah, so now as you can see, we currently have our actual retainer that we're gonna use for our custom box. This is gonna be the actual base of my custom box. And a, and a lot of people don't do this. They will make external boxes. But the reason why I'm using this is because I can just go ahead and reutilize these clips that go in here so I can just pop it right back in there. So what's going to happen is once I create the box in this actual cavity right here, I can clip it right back in there without having to worry about an external bracket. Now, depending on how much this weighs, it's going to determine if I'm going to put an external bracket for the support. Being that I am going to have a 12 inch subwoofer that's going to actually be in here and along with some fiberglass, which will add a little bit more um, weight that can um, uh, potentially make this sag down. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of measure the depth of where or how far I want my speaker to be from the actual car. I don't, I'm, I'm trying to decide if I want it to go on the angle or if I want to go straight. I think that I might have it just kind of sit straight just like this. I think I'm comfortable with this. I think this is about how much depth I want in the box. You know, guys, the bigger the box, the more base you're going to get. So I'm going to go ahead and mark right where my finger is to right here so I can kind of measure how far I want the rods to be once before I actually take the rods and actually use my uh, 
my glue gun in order to um, put them in place. So as you guys can see right here, this is gonna be the distance that I'm gonna have my subwoofer ring from the actual insert that goes on the side. So I'm gonna use this to prompt it. So as I'm putting these rods on um, to kind of stabilize it, to make my frame, it won't fall over. So I'm putting something right there. So now what I'm gonna do is start connecting these rods to create a structure for the actual speakers the actual box and that's when I'm going to fiberglass the entire thing. Pretty simple process. Okay. So I just placed the first one down. Now I'm going to get this glue gun and I'm going to kind of stabilize it so I can put the next one and I'm going to make a strong enough structure to where it can hold this in place. So getting ready to put this here and there. As you guys can see, I went ahead and put the hot glue gun on the first one. So now it's time to do the next one. All right, I just want to kind of show you guys how I'm coming along with the structure. So pretty much I'm just cutting rods and I'm just you just measuring it up so I ultimately can make the structure of the box. And once I have the rods in place and I feel it's firm enough, then that's when I'm going to go ahead and utilize a tape um, to hold it in place. Um, and from that point, that's when I'm going to lay down the fiberglass to ensure that it's um, sturdy and ready to go. All right. All right, guys, so next what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this 3M tape and I'm going to put this 3M tape around the ribs that I created of this structure. And what this is going to do is it's going to give me a hard enough structure to where I can put fiberglass that will bind and shape my material. So I'm going to go ahead and use use a really good tape when you're doing this so it can be really sturdy. And sturdy. I just want to kind of show you so far what I'm looking like. So as you can see, I went ahead and just put tape on the box. As you can see, I still have my traditional retainer to snap it in. I went ahead and just kind of taped up the box how I want it to look. As you can see internally, I taped it up. And so now I have my actual structure of how I want the box to be. So just kind of take a look at the back. So the reason why I wanted to create this structure is so that I can put fiberglass on here and create the box. How simple is this so far, guys? Pretty much I created ribs, used hot glue gun, uh, made a structure for the box, and now I reinforce it with tape. And just so you guys can see, this thing is pretty sturdy. It's not going anywhere. So yeah, guys, I mean, it's as simple as that. Um, it's an easy process so far. So now I'm going to uh, put a little bit more tape just to get a finer finish. So when I put the fiberglass on, I have limited, but any sanding. And I'm actually gonna put this material, um, you know, the carpet material over it. So it's gonna hide a million imperfections. So I'm not gonna have to smooth it out as much. And um, I'm also gonna put fiberglass internally in it um, as well, just to kind of retain the structure. But yeah, so far, I have my box. All right, as you guys can see, I went ahead and I used some really, really, you know, heavy duty uh, Gorilla tape, just to kind of give it that firmness that I needed. So when I'm putting the fiberglass on, it will be a lot smoother and less sanding for me. And maybe I might get lucky and not have too many imperfections to where I can put the material on there and I don't have to, you know, pretty much worry about uh, any imperfections. So, um, yeah, as you can see so far, so good. First I put the white tape, now I put the black tape. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut some sheets of fiberglass and I'm gonna uh, mix up some fiberglass resin and I'm probably gonna put about four layers of fiberglass um, on the inside and the outside of this and i'm gonna either put just resin or i may put some i think resin will make this hard enough but i'm also going to put potentially may put fiberglass on this too so when the speaker is um you know kicking it won't explode or break this being that's a softer material all right so there we go just to um for those of you who are not familiar with fiberglass i just want to show you these are 
what you call a fiberglass mat. And this is um, the best one to use because this one is not like the traditional beaded material, excuse me, weave material. This one actually goes a million directions. So what happens is when it actually gets hard, um, it's, it's the stiffest one. So I'm using this and those are gonna be my paint brushes to apply the fiberglass and that's gonna be my resin. Resin comes with hardener. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna pretty much um, just kind of measure up how much hardener you need um, to mix with the actual um, resin in order to uh, get your best results. If you're trying to work on a big project, you wanna put as little hardener as possible so you can have more time before the hardener gets hard because if you um, put too much hardener in the resin, you may have a two minute window. And so before you know it, you're, um, it's gonna get gunked up. You won't be able to move forward with finishing your project and it's gonna be a real mess. So yeah, that's it so far. So I just want to show you the materials that I'm gonna use. So I'm gonna pretty much cut these up in pieces to where I can put it on a, um, put it on a speaker box. And I'm just gonna pretty much soak it with the resin and the hardener. And when it gets hard, it's gonna create a surface. I just to right. show you, as you can see, how I'm putting the fiberglass down. I'm putting it right on the edge. I really want, don't wanna do that much um, shaving. And I'm gonna cut them up in little pieces like this and just put them on individually to build structure versus just overlapping pieces. That way I can kind of contour every curve and crevice. So as you can see, this is how I'm putting it on. Got my resin. I measured some hardener. So I'm gonna mix this in there. Then I'm gonna start painting this on there. All right guys, so this is how the box looks um, with the fiberglass on it, as you can see. It's hard as a rock. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just kind of sand it down a little bit. And once I sand it down, then I'm gonna go ahead and um, put put the actual um, truck material on the box and we're getting close to it guys. So yeah, I'm just gonna sand it down and clean up some of the edges and we'll be good to go. My whole goal, as you can see, I got this side hard too, is just to get a solid box. It feels like it picked up about three pounds of weight on the box from the um, fiberglass. But yep, that's um, how you put the fiberglass on there. You pretty much um, put the resin on there, let the resin sit, and bam, there you go. All right, next up. All right, guys, I'm done. Pretty much prepping the box, um, sanded it down. Uh, pretty smooth. Uh, I know it looks ugly right now, but What's gonna happen in the inside, I'm gonna put in some um, some poly material. And that's just, that's basically the stuff that uh, goes inside of pillows. When you have a smaller box, it um, makes the speaker feel that it's a bigger box because the sound waves are gonna take, take a longer time to bounce back. And I went ahead and drew a circle right here. So basically what's gonna happen right there is I'm gonna go ahead and put this um, actual speaker uh, wiring harness, or I guess you can call it. This is so I can run the speakers to the sub. So I'm gonna drill the hole, put the material on, and once I put the material on, I'll be able to squeeze it right in. So, so far so good, guys. As you can see, I still got all of my tabs that I need to put it back in the car, although it's a little bit heavy. So I may put like a little bracket just to give it a little support because the box did get a lot heavier than I expected. But so far so good, guys. So, coming along all right guys as you can see I went ahead and cut the hole for my actual speaker wires for the box so if I open this up I got the hole cut so this is so I can run the wires for the speaker so got that taken care of so I'm getting there guys I'm getting there almost done so now I'm gonna clean it up and then I'm gonna wrap it with the material and you're gonna see how amazing it's gonna look once it's wrapped with the material. I know it looks kind of weird right now with all these different shades and colors and kind of junky. But once I wrap it with that material, you guys are gonna be amazed. All right. Okay guys, next up, this is gonna be the adhesive that I'm gonna use to spray on the speaker box. And as you can see, this is gonna be the material um, that I got from Amazon, really cheap material, about $9.99 for more than you need. 
Um, I'm gonna use this to cover it so it can match the inside of my car. So that's where we're at. So I'm gonna put some gloves on, spray the speaker box down and put this material on the speaker box. I'm gonna kind of lay it over it and kind of stretch it back over it. All right, here we go. All right, guys. So as you can see, been working on the material over here. Here, if we can come right over here. I just got to get some light. As you can see, we're looking good so far. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut out the circle for the woofer, and of course, just tuck that in. And then I'm going to cut out the little circle that I made right here. All right, so guys, all right, guys. So here's the custom speaker box after I put the material on it. I told you guys the material would make this thing look official and amazing. I know it's crazy. You know, fiberglass is transparent, so it makes it look a lot uglier than it is. Keep in mind, guys, I'm also gonna be selling these um, boxes. And in addition, I'm gonna probably do some carbon fiber ones um, or some smooth surface ones. I just did it like this because I wanted to kind of transition with my trunk uh, in my car. Uh, so it can be more of a custom OEM look. Right now, let me just kind of take you guys around it. As you guys can see, pretty official. Take you guys around it. So on the back, as you guys can see, I still have all of the OEM clips. So I will be able to put them, um, put this back in the car without any problem. And I may just paint this black. Um, I didn't put any material on this. And the reason I didn't put any material on this one right here is because you're not gonna see it, didn't wanna waste material. So I might just paint it black or put some primer on it or just leave it the way it is. Now, once I put the 12 inch sub in, if it's too heavy, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a bracket back here or maybe one bracket on the side right here and one bracket on the side right here. So when you, so let's say for example, if you buy this and you don't use the OEM factory clips, if it's too heavy, maybe if you get a 10 inch, it may not be that heavy and you can reutilize your factory clips. But if not, there's going to be a bracket here and it's going to be an L bracket here and there's going to be an L bracket here. And the bracket is going to be the same material as this. So I'm going to cover the bracket with this material so you won't see the bracket and you can just screw it in right here and screw it in right here and you're good to go. So, yeah. So right now, um, as you can see, I went ahead and cut out this hole right here. And um, this hole is gonna be, you know, like I said, for uh, this. So I'm not gonna put this in yet. I wanna run the speaker wire from here and I want to um, bring them this way and connect them to the subs before I mount this. That way I ensure that everything is connected the way I need to. I don't, you don't wanna screw this in and then you have to unscrew it to put the sub in so right now i'm going to do sub testing and sub fitting i'm going to screw this in put the speaker wire here connect it to the sub and we're going to be rocking and rolling to the next step so give me one sec and i'll show you guys how it looks with the sub as you can see i cut out the hole for the actual speaker let them put fiberglass in there and i actually um have my uh speaker connector hooked up with my wires hooked up that I'm going to hook up to my actual speakers and as you can see I put the black for negative just so you don't make a mistake if you guys uh, don't feel like ordering poly find the cheapest pillow in your house like I did for this one right here rip it open guess what guys you got poly right there like I said the whole purpose of this is to um, absorb uh, the sound wave in the box. If you have a smaller section, it gives the woofer a deeper uh, and more bass as if it's a bigger box. Don't put too much because it can commingle with the speakers and you can lose sound. So just put enough just to kind of cover it up. So I'm going to go ahead and get this poly and put it in the speaker and I'm almost there guys. All right, so this is the speaker box, guys. As you can see, I have the poly inside of it to absorb that base. As you can see, it has a lot of depth 
um, on the actual box where you can get a lot of base out of there. I can make the box smaller, but like I said, the whole goal is to get as much base as you can. Uh, I'm utilizing my factory clips. However, as said before, I'm gonna go ahead and put a L bracket here and here, the same material as here if you would like to buy one um, that's gonna come with this actual kit. So we're gonna put the speaker inside and once we're done putting the speaker inside, we're gonna put it in the car to see how it looks in the car. So I appreciate um, anyone that made it to this point of the video and the journey. Once again, I appreciate all my new subscribers, my old subscribers. I'm gonna to continue to bring the content to you guys. The reason that I did this is because I feel that the Audi speakers B8.5 and below sound system could use a little bit more bass. It's not horrible. It's not the best, it's not the worst. I just feel like it can use a little bit more bass. And my um, B9 Audi Q5, I think they learned and they made they improved it. Um, however, it still can use a little more. Uh, and um, this is um, the solution to it. If you don't wanna put a big bulky speaker box in your trunk and you just want something that, look e that looks elegant in OEM, I think this is gonna be um, the right fit for you. So let me go ahead and put this speaker in so we can see how it looks with the actual speaker in and then we're gonna put it in the car. So first I'm gonna put the speaker in. Um, so this is gonna be the speaker that I'm gonna be using. It's gonna be a Kenwood 1100 watt um, speaker. Uh, it's a 12 inch sub. Uh, I will be making kits for 10 inch sub and 12 inch subs depending on what you want. So let's go ahead and um, hook this up and see what we're working with. I actually put this, so I said before, before I actually put the speaker in, I'm gonna go ahead and hook it up now. I just let a, left a little bit of room to play with just so it would be easy for me to hook it up. It's better that you hook this up before you put it in um, so you won't have any issues. And my black, negative, my, my positive, and so then we're gonna put it in. See, I currently have the speaker in the box. It fits perfectly so far, so I'm gonna go ahead and screw these tabs in. All right, guys, check it out. This is the final product right here, guys. This is the final product. So this is a 12 inch sub. So this is designed to go. As you can see, we have our nice copper speaker prongs. We got our Kenwood 12 inch speaker. Like I said, I am doing 10 inches and 12 inches if you're interested. And it fits perfect, guys. I'm so excited. This series, guys, in part one is pretty much showing you guys how to create the box. Now, the next part is gonna be the tricky part. And the next part is gonna be how do we hook this thing up? How do we hook up an external amp to our system? How do we get the um, communication from the radio? on to the amp to this actual um, speaker and to have a pristine sound. As you can see, I have part two coming soon and I'm gonna show you guys how you can hook up the system to your car. So not only will you have a nice new sub, you will also be able to hook it up to your factory stereo. How cool is that guys? So let me just kind of give you a side view this is going to be a side view of how it will look from the side right here all right here's the other side told you guys it was going to come out good in my opinion it looks great you know so and it's going to be right on the side of your car so you won't have any issues as far as fitting luggage or anything in your car that you need to i think this is a great mod that everyone should have like I said, I understand that everyone don't have the capability of being able to make these boxes. So as a courtesy, I'm selling these boxes. So there's gonna be a link in the description if you're interested in one. Um, I make them custom as you can see from this video. So just keep in mind, if you do a request, do it ahead of time. Um, that way I can go ahead and make it for you um, and have it shipped out to you in about a week or two. This, this this is pretty much it, guys. So right now, what we're going to do is we're going to slide it in the car. And I'm going to give you guys a nice little visual of how it looks in the car. And um, please stay tuned for part two. 
Um, even if you're if you're not utilizing the custom box, you can benefit from part two because I show you how you can tap into your system and your amp to use the aftermarket amp to power this uh to power this speaker. All right, guys. So watch this visual coming up. This is Bruce with Bruce Custom Motors. Peace. I'm out. All right, guys. So this is how it looks in the car. How cool is that? How cool is that, guys? This is how it looks in the car. <laughs> view so if you look at it from this angle it looks pretty cool